Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to turn this mesh model into an accurate CAD model in under 6 minutes using Rhino 7, well using Rhino 8 but this would work in Rhino 7 too. So first up I bring the CAD model in, rotate it 90 degrees so front view is as you see it. Then using the align tool I pop it out into the viewport and type align center 000. zero, zero make a layer for datum points, zoom in real close and put a point on the extreme Z height features of the model. I'll use this to trim the recreated geometry later. I'm going to select points and then use my align pop out to move them off to the side. Just keeps them easy to see. I'm going to make a new layer and call it raw sections. This is what I'm going to section the mesh with. So double click on that layer to make it the active layer. Select the mesh geometry and take the sections. Okay, taking three in this case just to see if there's any deviation through that main cylinder there. Into top view and just inspecting the curves. I'm not seeing two curves there, I'm just seeing one curve which means that it's straight up and down through the center. Going to make another layer and call it Rebuild. Rebuild. And now I'm going to use a three point circle. Uh, it takes me a second here just to get organized with my snaps. Center snaps is great but it tends to override everything else as you can see here. Anyway, I'm going to make a three point circle from these uh, highly faceted circles reducing the point count which will lead to us having really nice clean uh, geometry. So I just go around each circle and create a new three point circle on each one. Look, theoretically you could create one, cross check it and then do a polar array. Um, however, I'm just not doing that in, in this video. go through all the circles, snap to them. You can see this one, there's a little bit of deviation there on that facet. So I've gone to the outside of the green facet, which is off the scan data, and just checked it there. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. So into perspective view, just to check that everything looks okay there. Now I'm just gonna bring my datum dots in to check that I'm in the right spot. Yep, okay. So next I'm going to extrude these curves and I'm going to trim them eventually with the datum dots. Doesn't matter how far you extrude the curves, if you're in Rhino 8 it'll extrude them as solids using the gumball. If you're in Rhino 7 it'll extrude them as open surfaces. It doesn't matter at this point. Now I extrude those points across and I'm going to use the lines to trim the surfaces to the correct heights. There we go. Now I cap it all using the cap command which I type in. Oh sorry, now I'm going to actually prep these holes. So I'm selecting them all and I'm going to turn these into cutters. So I'm just simply going to extrude them and leave them there as solids. If that was Rhino 7, you'd have to cap it if you're using the same method as me. Now I cap those open cylinders. I'm going to join them together using a boolean union. Okay, and then straight into doing a boolean difference with those holes, hole cutters, which is gonna cut the whole shape into the main solid. There we go. Okay, so that's the outside looking, hopefully, like the mesh. We'll check at the end. Okay, now the inside cut, I'm gonna stick with that boolean difference method, extrude it through, and use it as a cutter, then delete it. Sometimes you can keep your cutters on a layer called cutters, but didn't feel the need to do that on this one. Right, so that is, I think, everything. So I'm just having a look at what geometry I've got there, getting rid of the curves, and turning the layer back on with the scan. Now you can see how the surfaces are kind of um, changing color like that. That means that surface is exactly on the mesh. Um, I'm using a plug-in deviation analyzer here, 
with a tolerance of 0 0.05, wow, 0 0.01, and that is showing still pretty good, but you can just see the facets on those inside circles, but the facets on the mesh, not on my surfaces, so I've actually cleaned it up. 0 0.1, all green, it's all within 0 0.1 millimeters. Now I'm going to show you a way to do this in just, uh, you know, native Rhino. Um, and it's using the point deviation command, which is a little bit slower than what I just did, but it's still a great tool. Uh, just drop those curve divisions to a lower number. Select the mesh, and then select your surfaces, and hit enter when you're done. It'll pop up on the right hand side, and it's quite a powerful command, there's a lot of options. <clears throat> so you can see I've got good point at one millimeter, which means it displays a dot anywhere that the two selections are within one, one millimeter, which is obviously everywhere. So I'm going to dial that down to 0 0.1, good points. Bad points it's going to display as yellow, and at the moment a point needs to be, well the surface, is, the surface and the mesh need to be three mil apart for it to show. So I'm going to drop that right down to 0 0.2. Well, we're still not really seeing any yellow, which means that the whole model is in 0 0.1. You can see this readout down the bottom shows the average distance. Average distance being 0 0.015, which, you know, isn't bad for a six-minute reverse engineering job. That said, this was a really simple <laughs> mesh model but just a bit of an intro into the basics of my workflow for reverse engineering mesh data. I'll hopefully be making a few more of these, so if you have any questions or comments, please let me know, and thank you for your attention.